Our sins separated us and polluted us before the Lord, but we are redeemed through his blood and our obedience. <clears throat> his blood will be Yahweh Shai, who in the war equally called Jesus. I want to give all the honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rawah Kodash. Double honors to my elders at Great Millstone, taught me the truth of the Spirit. Sing honors to the elect. Peace and blessings be to all the sincere men, women, and children that do consist of the one third. And to the confusion of faces in the four corners of the earth, Shalom. I'm making this video in response to my recent video on Jake doing the snatch and grab, the robberies, um, in Cali. <clears throat> and like I say, man, yeah, we look like a degenerate plant. And the glorious thing about this, you know, if you understand what I mean, it's what's going to be the end of it. Like it says in Ecclesiastes, it said better is the end of a thing than the beginning. We're at the end of our captivity. We're at the end of all of this sin, all this iniquity. We're at the end of it all. But you got to remember the Lord said through much tribulation shall be entered to the kingdom of heaven. So, as wickedness is coming to an end, they have to up the amperage, <laughs> right? They have to make it more intense. That's really those demons, those angels on the left-hand side that's committing all of these things via through people because, you know, we are conductors, right? Without, like the scripture says, as the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without works is dead. So, as... Esau, the wicked himself, continues to uh, increase the wickedness throughout the earth. Our people, the two thirds, they will do the same thing. You have to remember that. When the Lord said two parts therein shall be cut off. So as a whole, because we live a life of generalization, generally the world look at us as scum. It's the bottom of the barrel. They can care less about the elect, the men on the highways and byways, right? So our sins, the things that we have done has caused us to be looked at as the dregs of the earth. And I admit it, it looks bad, but we know the future. Our men walking around, feminine, disrespectful, killing and murdering one another, our uh, women walk around looking like harlots, keeping the ch ch children from the men, nor the men taking care of the children for those who who are dealt with women that want to have a family, but you want to still run the streets. Our people looking at slave food, at soul food. Our people, our people thinking there's nothing wrong with Martin Day Christianity. They will uphold it to the upteen power. Everything else is demonic, but they don't look at white supremacy as demonic. Like, when the Lord said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Like looking at how our people say, oh, you don't own a suit. You crazy. Well, I'm looking at you like you don't own an ephod. Do you know who you are? You get what I'm saying? That's the mind of our people. And, and, and the iniquity of wanting to be like a heathen, man, is what led us to be in this situation. This is Isaiah 52 and 3. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. What does it mean we sold ourselves? We went into slavery. <clears throat> well, you reading in Deuteronomy 28th chapter, how the Lord said we were going to slavery on ships. The Lord was telling Moses this, that he wrote down on the tablets. The first five books are the first, also known as the first five books of Moses in the Bible. Am I wrong? The Torah? The Torah, right? That was millenniums ago, and it has transpired. You can see the Lord is a man of his word. Yes, we sold, we were sold for nothing until this day. Remember what it says? On those who have reaped down your field, cry unto the Lord of Sabaoth. The Lord hear our cries. The Lord understand. I know, I know that you, now that you've awakened, you've been enlightened, you understand who you are. Now you're crying and pleading for me to come back and get you. Sure, indeed, I will. That's why I left you with the comforter. But all things must be fulfilled. Yeah. 
Check this out. <clears throat> this is Isaiah 25 and 8. He will swallow up death and victory, and the Lord will wipe away all tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for Yahweh have spoken it. So all these Cardi B's and Nicki Minaj's and Foxy Brown's and Little Kim's, or all these little pumps and little Uzi Verts and NWA and all these um dope boys and scammers and all all that all that's not gonna exist anymore in the kingdom. Those are the two thirds that's gonna be wiped away. And guess what? Some of us were those people. Ain't nothing can no man can walk and say his heart is pure. Not me. You know, we all have done something to some extent that you look back and you know, like now you know in the eyes of the Lord, man, I was sinning. Man, that wasn't right. That's that's the beginning of repentance. But because of our sins, it separated us from our power and it polluted us. It's Isaiah 47 and 6. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted my inheritance. And giving them into thine hand. The Lord is saying, I'm giving them to you, Esau. Thou didst shew them no mercy. No, they did not. Upon the ancient hast thou verily heavily laid thy yoke. A simple um, example of that is you got an adolescent, like a nine, ten year old Edomite boy, telling a 60, 70 year old Israelite man, hey boy, go out there and get me some water. And that's just verbal abuse, not even the physical abuse. You understand? That's how wrath, meaning incense, mad, anger the Lord was with us. To the point the Lord said, I polluted my inheritance because I've given you into their hands. The lawless of all the heathens. Every captivity we've been in, from the Babylonians to the Egyptians, the Medes, the Persians, the Medio Persian Empire. Even going back to the Assyrian Empire, all the way up to the Greco-Roman Empire, we knew who we were. And though we were subjugated, we always knew who we were and kept our heritage. Once Esau came around, the Greco-Roman Empire and the Book of Maccabees, they made us stop doing everything. From circumcision to keeping the Shabbat, the Passover, to uh, they used to hang our infants from the bridges, from the walls, if I'm not mistaken, from the walls. Right? All of that was evil brought upon us from what? Disobeying our power. And then the resurrection after a thousand years of Satan being cast away. That's you, Esau. Satan just means enemy. Devil just means liar or slander. And you definitely are every single last one of those. All right. That old serpent. Yeah. Going back to the garden. That's you. After a thousand years. You've been loose to deceive the world for a little longer, which goes back to the renaissance, the rebirth. That's what it said. Remember, it spoke about the one head of the beast that was healed. It was wounded, but it was healed. That's the Roman Empire being born again via the Renaissance. You know America is Rome all over again. Look at the back of the dollar bill. Roman numerals. Anua coeptus. Anova seclorum. Those are Latin terms. In school, they always use Latin terms. Right? So this is it. But this is also the end. Esau has done a great job at destroying our people. And that's the left hand side of the Lord. The Lord said he was going to do it and he did it. And he also said he was going to redeem us from that. This is on <clears throat> 1 Peter chapter 16, verse 22. Because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. And if ye call on the father who without respect of person judge according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning, here in fear. So holy means to be separate. Separate ourselves from the society. We call on the Father, but he has a name, and it's Yahweh. And his only begotten son name is Yahweh Shai. So we call upon them in fear. Remember, Isaiah 33 and 6. Knowledge of wisdom shall be the stability of thy time in the fear of the Lord our treasure. We treasure this wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Because I was talking to the brother Lawat. He called me and he said something beautiful. He said, listen to the brothers of Chicago. And like three of the brothers was talking about how they witnessed like horrendous things happening. Like brother said, man, something happened near me. I could have died. 
But, you know, it was somebody else, yada, yada, yada. And they said, could they have the wisdom and knowledge to understand what's happening to them? It doesn't it doesn't like move them in the manner it will move people who don't believe or like who everyday Christian like, man, all this stuff, man, all this. Well, to go back to the curses. Once again, we pollute it. We are polluted. And because we're not reigning, that's why evil is all over the earth. It's spreading rampant like a virus, a communicable disease. <clears throat> this is first Peter chapter one, verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Mashiach. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So he gave his life for us, the elect. Notice, nobody in church who loved John 3, 16 will ever quote John 17 and 10, if you're not mistaken, where it says, I pray for them, I pray not for the world. In other words, I die for them, I die not for the world. Let that sink in. Verse 20. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. These last times for you. Because he died for us. That's why we can understand the deep, dark parables. Notice the word dark, right? Well, only way you can look through the dark is if you have the what? Light. Second Corinthians 4 and 6, that light is the knowledge of Yahweh Shai. Hence, we're able to to understand the deep, dark parables because we've been enlightened. We have the decipher, the Rabbi HaKodash, John 14 and 17. The spirit of truth which the world cannot receive, it shall reveal unto us all things. That's why we can understand this. It has nothing to do with any scholar, any school of theology, nothing. It goes right back to the spirit so that we can say it has nothing to do with me. It's the Rabbi HaKodash. Whether you believe or not, you shall know that the prophet was amongst you because the spirit of Yahweh Shai's prophecy. The Lord said he was going to put us in the captivity millenniums ago, a millennium is a thousand years. So over two th over 2,000 years ago, 3,000 if you really want to be specific. And to this day, everything has transpired. And then the Lord also goes on to say that he shall save his people. Now that's what we're looking for. That's what we're waiting for. That's what the faith really is. We, 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 we've seen what happened we're experiencing what's happening but we're waiting to see what will what shall happen that right there where the cookie com where the cookie crumbles into some ice cream <laughs> let's get back so this is um first peter chapter um one verse 20 who verily was for a day before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you who by him do believe in god that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God, Yahweh. Seeing ye have purified your souls. So how do you purify your soul? By going and having your body dipped in some tap water by a whole bunch of strangers. Maybe some women are on the menstrual cycle. Hmm? Maybe some people may have danced in the sheets the night before and didn't decide to take a shower that morning. You just dipping all in that nasty water, right? Yeah? No, that's not how you purify your soul. Listen here. First Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. Yeah? Through the Spirit. It goes right back to the Spirit. Unto unseen love of the brethren. If you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, keep my commandments. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. There's no greater love than the man laid out his life for his friend. So making yourself a living sacrifice out here on the highways and byways, not only for Yahweh Bashim, I was shy, but to save those who do believe, that is a high honor and a high ranking. And like Elder Pastor Hart said, and it's true, if you really think about it, who has the highest office, the highest order on the face of the earth? Not your king, not your prince, not your, your emperors, the prophet. The prophet will always have the highest honor on earth because Yahweh is dealing directly through them and letting you know what shall come to pass. Because remember, the Lord ruleth in the kingdom of men, and he said it over it, the bases of men, which is why, yeah, 
in Daniel, it says the saints shall take the kingdom. There ain't going to be no G20 summit. It's going to be a lot of judgment. So with that being said, I pray you at five fed, stay in the spirit, don't fear it, just endure it. Ask for forgiveness, pray without ceasing, stay humble, remain diligent. Allah, Muflaba Ball, Shalom.